Hello grade 10s. In today's lesson, we will be looking at how functions can be used to show growth in bacteria. Let's join Dylan as he explains this. Unless treated, specific bacteria grow at the unusual rate shown in this graph. This function is also nonlinear. Because the bacteria grow continuously, in other words, all the time, the function is continuous and the graph is a solid line. The number of bacteria is dependent on the time in which they have been allowed to grow. As time increases, the number of bacteria increases, so this is an increasing function. Let's analyze the growth of bacteria here on an accurate graph. After three seconds, what is the number of bacteria? Well, you need to look at the corresponding output value. So when t is equal to 3, the number of bacteria or output value is 15. Now if the number of bacteria or output value is 35, we can see that the corresponding input value is 5. This means that after 5 seconds, the number of bacteria is 35. Now clearly, the graph is not a straight line, and so the formula is not linear. Now let's investigate this by looking at a table of values. As before, we will consider when the input values are changed by one unit to see what effect this has on the output values. So here is a table of my input and corresponding output values of the graph that I've just seen. Notice though that the number of bacteria is never zero, so this has been left out. Now for the first unit change in the input values, we can see that the output changes by three to eight, it changes by five units. The next unit change in the input values results in a change from eight to 15 in the output values, in other words, a change of seven. The next unit change in the input values results in a change from 15 to 24 in the output values, in other words, a change of nine. And the last unit change in the input values makes the output change from 24 to 35. In other words, there's a change there of 11 units. Did you notice a pattern? The changes were not constant, but they did form a sequence. Let's have a look at how the changes changed. So we're looking at the pattern in these numbers. Remember, these numbers represent the rate of change of this function. And we can see that the change between 5 and 7 is 2 units. Again, the change between 7 and 9 is 2 units. And lastly, the change between 9 and 11 is again 2 units. So what have we just seen? Well, we saw that the rate of change of this function was not constant. But when we had a look at the rate of change of the rate of change, we saw that it was constant. It was always 2. In this situation, the formula is said to be quadratic, and the graph representing the formula, we call that graph a parabola. For the growth of bacteria, we would not consider negative time values. But this is what the entire graph looks like if we zoom out. Now remember, a quadratic expression is an expression where one of the terms is the square of the independent variable. And you have been dealing with many examples of quadratic expressions already in your maths career. Here's an example. If you factorize x squared minus 2x minus 3, you'd be dealing with a quadratic expression. Now let's use this clue about quadratics to see if we can find this relationship. I'm going to call the function f, and I'm going to use f of t because it's a function that is based on time. It's a function of time, in other words, t. When t is equal to 1, the number of bacteria is equal to 3. In other words, f of 1 is equal to 3. When time is equal to 2, the number of bacteria rises to 8. In other words, f of 2 is equal to 8. When the input is 2, the output is 8. Input 2, output 8. When f, rather when t is 3, f of 3 is equal to 15. And lastly, f 
of an input value of 4 is equal to 24. The fact that this is a quadratic function means that to find the output values, I need to square the input values. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to take each input and square it. So 1 squared, well 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 2 squared, in other words 2 times 2 is 4. 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is equal to 16. Obviously there is more to this relationship than just squaring because this answer is not the same as the output. What can I do to each of these values so that I get the required output values? Well, let's start out by looking at the difference between the squared value and the required output value. So I'm going to make a column for difference. And the difference between these two is 2. The difference between these two values is 4. The difference between these two values is 6. And lastly, the difference between these two values is 8. Do you see a pattern? Look at the difference and compare it to each input value. What is the relationship between the input value of 1 and the difference of 2? And what is the relationship between the input value of 2 and this difference of 4? Do you notice that the input value of 1 can be multiplied by 2 to get to the difference? and the input value of 2 can also be multiplied by 2 to get to the difference. Let's check the other values. 6 is indeed 3 times 2, and 8 follows the same pattern because it is 4 times 2. So in each case, this answer here for the difference is given by the input value multiplied by 2. Input value multiplied by 2, input multiplied by 2, and lastly, input multiplied by 2. So as a summary, we can see that the output value, in this case 24, is generated by the input, which is t squared, and then we need to add 2 times the input t. Now let's write the formula down nice and clearly. The output is equal to the input squared plus 2 times the input. Remember, our output depends on time or the variable t. So in terms of function notation, f of t is equal to t squared plus 2 times t. Now to make sure that this formula is correct, I'm going to calculate what the output value is when my input is 5. So now, f of 5 will equal to 5 squared plus 2 times 5, which is equal to 25 plus 10. Therefore, f of 5 is equal to 35. Luckily, this corresponds with the value we saw on the graph. So we know that the formula is correct. Let's recap. We said that this formula was a quadratic formula. Let's have a look why. Here, as in all quadratic formulae, is the independent variable being squared. And in this case, it just so happens that the coefficient of our squared independent variable is 1. Having determined this formula means that we can now find any values, input and output values, even those that were not initially represented on our graph. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember to watch the Functions Task video where you will find more questions on functions. You can also find more information on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.